Radhe Radhe everybody. Thank you, Karanga Sundara, for inviting me. Radhe Radhe Jakshu. Radhe Radhe. For inviting me to read. And I chose verse 10. Uh, because you told me there's quite some parallel to the verse 20. And I, so this is very good to read it now after verse 20. So the verse 10 from Vilap Kusumanjali is as follows. O oh goddess, I am a maidservant of your lotus-like feet, whose vine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glances. Do I read loud enough because of the earplugs? I don't really hear myself so well. Yeah, the voice is a little bit uh, dull, dull. No? Okay. Sundar, no? It's not clear, the voice, but it has maybe something to do with your device. I don't know. Oh, goddess, I am a maidservant of your lotus-like feet. whose vine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glances. Ah, Goranga Sundar, yes, yes. I have a question, so please. Why? Yeah, besser. Goranga Sundar, we cannot hear you. No. Now. Now it's better. Yeah. Okay. So here, Ragunat is saying, "Please revive me." So what does it mean? That he is feeling that he is dying. And only you, Swamini, by your causeless mercy, your soft heart, can revive me. He is dying. He is burning from separation. And he is dying. Not only metaphorically, poetically, but he feels that if Swamini doesn't give him just a little bit of her direct seva and direct darshan, he doesn't have any, any reason to continue with his life. So getting them in the mood of verse is entering in the mood of feelings of Raghunath. So each word is important because it brings us in this ocean of his emotions. And when we receive mercy, kripa, we can feel his feelings. And this is the most important in our sadhana. If we don't feel Raghunath's feelings, if we don't feel Raghunath's tears, it's not possible to practice Manjari Bhava sadhana. But if we just feel little bit, one drop, like we say, his feelings, if we feel his tears weeping, 
then our sadhana can advance in proper direction and in the proper way. So this connection between sadaka and rasik, pure rasik, perfect devotee, is the most, most important instructions from all other instructions. And all benefits from this connection will come in the life of sadaka. If he is not connected with love, he cannot follow the rasika devotee. So, sadaka is praying sincere sadaka, mature sadaka. He is praying, please, you are giving me your words, and this is indescribable mercy that I can read, listen, repeat your words. But I want more. I want to dive in the feelings of your heart when you were writing or speaking these words. Otherwise, what is the use if we just know the words of Raghunath, if we are not diving in his feelings? Then this is not Raga Bhakti. We can know his words, his statements, the verses, but if we don't feel from which mood, from which emotional situation he spoke these words, Manjari Bhav Sadhana will be very, very difficult to practice and the path will be very, very thorny, full of thorns. So the great challenge for Sadaka is not to chant unlimited rounds, not to have Lila Smarana morning, in the noon, in the evening, everything has to be paka. The greatest challenge is how to open my heart to receive the heart of Rasik devotee. This is the greatest challenge. Be why this is the greatest challenge? Because it requires to overcome bodily consciousness of life. The more we have our bodily consciousness of life quite fixed in our consciousness, the more is difficult to open really heart and the soul and the mind to the minds and hearts to Acharyas. Honestly to saying, this is the essence of any sadhana. Any sad every sadhana, it doesn't matter which kind of Ishtadev devotee is hankering for, requires to be connected with servants of that Ishtadev. And then from that connection, deep emotional connections, Everything is going in the proper way and everything is developing. Why this is so important also? Even if Radhika or Ishtade for other devotee appear in the dream or in the conscious state of life, because of her mercy. If he is not connected with her maidservants,
he will forget it. And he will not know how to continue this. So the main instruction is to connect our feelings, our hearts, our minds with the feelings, we say mood, but when we say mood, we say feelings of the heart of particular Rasik devotee. This is the reason also why we have a guru, because this is the starting point. This is not the goal, but this is the starting point to progress in our spiritual practice. If we are not able to connect our heart with Guru, who is Guru Manjari? How we will connect the heart with all other Mahajans? Because we don't know them. They are just present in the books. We cannot make close relationship with them. And we have great mercy and opportunity to have pure devotee and to take the shelter of pure devotee like our Gurudev and try to establish an emotional connection. Because Seva to Guru brings person to <clears throat> Ahaituki Seva. without any motives, causeless say, And it should be practiced in Sadakavesh and also in Swarupvesh. Then we can learn how to serve a Haituki without any hidden motives, materialistic motives. Ishtadev. So this close connection is very important and if we understand that Raghunat, just in the verse, he say, I am your maidservant. I know who I am, and I don't want to be anything else. And then he said, please revive me. He's addressing Radhika. My dear Devi, revive me, otherwise I will die without you. And this is the crucial, crucial point for practicing good Manjari Bal Sadhana. I am made servant, so it means he said first, O oh goddess, O oh Devi, you are my goal. Then he said, I am your maid servant. I see myself, I ident identify myself like a maidservant of my beloved Shri Devi, Devi, goddess of my heart. And then he say, my vine-like body burns in the forest fire of separation from you. It's not that I'm just suffering because I cannot be with you. And if you don't appear to me, then I will forget you. I will lose my faith in you. No, he is saying my vine-like body, tender body, very tender body burns from separation in the forest fire, not in the just flame of separation, but forest fire. My materialistic body is burning in the forest fire of materialistic desires, but Raghunath's one like body burns in the forest fire of separation because he is completely in love. He is, first of all, he is burning in love and then he is burning 
in separation from beloved. So this is connection. It, and automatically, tears are coming. And these tears from his heart are actually language of his heart. You know, this weeping, it said, actually is the goal of life for our for us neophytes and sadaka. We should meditate on the weeping of Rag Ragunath. It's a better to meditate on Ragunath's weeping than to chant our mechanically our sixty four rounds or hundred eight or something. If we just chant without feelings, we will become even more engrossed in our material bodies. We will become ayavadis. In the best cases, we can become Vaikuntha devotees. But if we connect our feelings with Radhika's eternal maidservants, Then weeping, their weeping, is the goal of our life. And it's very serious thing. Because this is the greatest way to attain Yugala Kishore. And this is Raga Bhakti. This is not Vaidhi. This is not Dharmic, religious. This is not Yoga. This is not Jnana. This is Raga. Raga means emotions, senses, spiritual senses. It has to be connected with the spiritual senses of Ragatmic devotee, in this case, Rupa Ragunata Pade So now we have a chance actually to listen his crying because this is these ten words like Chakshuji chose is opening the words in Vilapa Kusumajal. He is preparing himself, but all crying and praying, but he also preparing us, Nelfits, to enter in the proper mood with proper attitude and awareness in the morning seva. And how can we enter in the morning seva in very intimate bathroom if we are not completely connected emotionally with those who are already on that position? So this is the first point, and we here devotees, we know that 99% of Vilapa Kusumanjali and Radha Rasa Sudhani, the commentaries, in the beginning are preparation, the consciousness to enter in the proper mood. And entering the proper mood means to really follow. If we cannot follow the feelings of Raghunath, we cannot follow him. If we cannot enter the feelings of our guru, how we can follow him? It's not a question of qualification at all. It's the question of feeling connections with deep love. Then other things will come. Like Gurudev said, then you don't have to make any endeavor. Of course that I don't have to make any endeavor when I'm in love. Whatever I do, I do with love. Even if I'm not perfect, even if I do mistakes, but I'm doing it to please you, my dear. Then this kind of path is not 
thorny anymore. Otherwise, so many obstacles, so, so many difficulties and misconceptions are coming because we are not properly connected with the feelings of Rasik devotees. And when we correct this kind of consciousness, when we tune our hearts on them, then all misconceptions will disappear. Because in their hearts there is no any misconception. This is Raga Bhakti. This is the reason why the famous words of Rupa Goswami He's saying, Vraja Lokanusarata. There is no way to enter in Vraja. We can travel in Vraja lifetimes and lifetimes. But if we don't catch the feelings and mood of Vraja Vasis, it will be benefit, of course. But the point is to catch soon as possible. the mood, feelings of Rajavasis. Because dust from in Raja has the feelings. Dust from Raja and dust from Dvaraka is not the same, my dears. Wind in Raja is not the same like a wind in Mathura or Dvaraka or somewhere else. This is the mood of wind. And what to say about Vrajavasis people? And this is the reason why Gurudev so many, at least to me, he was saying, you didn't land, st you still didn't land from Europe to Vrindavan. Yes, because I, to land in Vrindavan means to immediately connect with the feelings, but it begins even from Europe. If we are connected here, I don't know, in Germany, Croatia, Switzerland, America, Australia, if we are trying to connect our feelings with the feelings of Raghunath, then we will be in every circumstances, every places, we will feel his weeping. We will hear his weeping. We will be connected with his burning heart from eagerness to attain direct service to his beloved Devi. Please revive me at once with your nectarian glands. Only you can revive me. You are Govinda Jivani. You are only one who can revive Govinda, your beloved lover. But I'm your maidservant. You see? First, he said, I am a maidservant of your lotus feet. So it means that you can be also merciful to me. And my vine-like body is burning because it's so tender and I'm depending on your vine, your embodiment of devotional service. You are the vine of devotional service. I'm just a small butt. And because of that, Labanga, Labagalatika, Labangalatika Mike. Yeah. 
So Sadaka needs to invoke in his mind, at least in his mind, if not in the heart, this situation when Raghunath, because of his burning separation, is crying and praying to Srimati Radharani. This is Raga Sadam Bhakti. But if he is not connected with the feelings, with the mellows which are constantly flow in the heart of Raghunath, it's very difficult to practice Manjari Bhav Sadhana. I just wanted to. Because I felt it's so, so important. Oh, I see Gurudev now. Dade Radha Gurudev. Already a monsoon of nectar. So we start with the notes. Sri Raghunath in his Svarupa Vesh is weeping out of separation from Sri Radha. These feelings of separation are as painful as the high rising flames of a forest fire. Strongly desiring to see his Praneshwari, he falls on the bank of Radhakund and anxiously laments. He, she, is unable to go on carrying the burden of his or her vine-like body that is burning in the fire of separation from Ishwari. And cries in an abode of misery. like a desolate orphan. Those who have surrendered to Sri Radhika's lotus feet cannot find consolation in anything of this world anymore. Their minds and their lives are floating like wooden instruments on the stream of Shira, the sweetness that inundates the whole world. Their minds and lives floating like a wooden. We don't hear you so well. Now? Yes. It's better. Yes. I don't know. My mic some, is doing something. So those who have surrendered to Radhika's lotus feet, their minds and lives are floating like a wooden instruments. Where? On the stream of Radhika's sweetness. They are interesting only in the sweetness of Shimate Radharani. Because their love is so pure that they are not interesting about anything else. And this is, I like this comparison, wooden instruments. So what wood can do in a strong stream of river? Nothing. <laughs> Just to give up and to surrender to the stream. Why? Because 
only then wood can become instrument for the seva. First, it must give up independence, surrendering completely, and then it can be wooden instrument. And this kind of wooden instrument can sound very nicely because the strings in its heart is vibrating beautiful songs of eagerness, prayers, humility, only for the pleasure of Shemata Radharani. So first we have to become wood and just surrender to the stream of Radhika's sweetness, Radhika's beauty, Radhika's compassion, Radhika's paraki above. And then sadaka can become instrument. And by following those who are already wooden instruments, who are playing through their strings so nicely, maybe such funny wood, imperfect wood, like Sadaka, like me, one day can become instrument. So, it's not just poetic expressions. To become wood instrument requires following the feelings of those who are already wood instruments. Someone who is expert has to make from wood instrument. You can give me wood, but I cannot make violin or vina from that, because I don't know how to do that. But if I come close to expert in making wooden instruments, then slowly, but surely, I can receive love and expertise from him. Because he is doing, he is so expert that he is doing violin or vi veena, this wooden instrument with love. He is not doing mechanically like a machine. So Shishya needs to receive love and true love, slowly he will be become expert, good, good instruments in the hands of master. So now you, we can see how it's important to be connected, what we were talking before, with feelings of Raghunath. In this Raj Vilas Dava, Srila Raghunathas Goswami writes, My heart becomes very agitated by remembering even a drop from the divine ocean of their nectarian rasa. The great teachers of devotion say, What is natural for the perfected souls is the target of the aspirant's practice. Is the most, again, one more most important instruction. 
What, I what think, is natural? Yes, I just please. read it again. Please, what read is it. natural? What is natural for the perfected souls is the target of the aspirants' practice. So, perfect person who attain perfection or who is who appears with a perfection is perfect because his feelings are completely pure and his senses are also completely pure. So this is the target. For them, this for sadakas. For perfect devotees, this is the normal situation. They are already on that level. And automatically, this is normal situation for them. But sadaka, who is thinking about their perfection during their sadhana, he will attain mercy and the same goal like perfect devotees. This is Naratam Das Thakur's words. Sunitiji knows, I think, much better than me. This is Ragera Pata, path of Ragabhati. Raga cannot arise in any heart which is not open to the hearts of already perfect Raga devotees, Raga Nuga. And we here are speaking not only about Raga Bhakta, we are talking about Rupa Nuga. Very specific <laughs> mood of becoming and the attaining position of maidservants of Shimati Ratara. So whatever Sadaka is thinking during his sadhana, you know, following the mood of perfect devotees, like the goal he will attain it. And we start from where we are starting, from catching the mood, the mellow of our closest Manjari. And this is Guru Manjari. We cannot jump over him or her. The example given by the great devotional teachers of yore is the compass for the practicing Rasika devotees of Vrindavan. Example. What does it mean, example? It's not only outside behavior. It's not only outside what they are doing outside. Example means to understand the feelings of my example devotee. He is exemplary for me because I want to dive in same feelings like him, not to imitate him. His example is that he is eager. Baba is saying here, Chakshuji, read, agitated. Agitation is example. Because it's the symptom of feelings. You know, when we are agitated about something, it's expression of feelings. This is the sign of feelings, isn't it? So this 
Raghunath is an example of agitation. He is not an example of Shanti. Peace, peace, liberation, mukti. No. He is example of love. He is example of eagerness. He, he is example of agitation. He is example of so many unlimited emotions. This is example. Not to put the tilak like he is doing, not to put this vesh around his body. No, this is not example. Example is his love, his pure feelings. This is example which I want to follow. So when we clarify this, there is no any more confusion. And there is no more and uh, there is no necessity for any other subjects. We don't have to put on the ground this sublime subject which Raghunath is speaking and Baba is commenting and our beloved Guru there is opening what they are really talking. When we are really deeply connected with the feelings and we are in association of those who are anchoring, longing for the same goal, then there is no necessity to put this subject on the ground. We, we are not putting the sublime subject of Rasik devotees on the ground. We are trying to go deeper on the level where they are. But because we are not emotionally connected through the soul, we are always using psychology, astrology, we are using everything to put them on our level. And we are thinking that we will understand better. No, it doesn't work like this. If we just be wood <laughs> in the stream of their love to Swamini, then they will rise up us on the level. where they are diving. So this is the point. And there is hope in that river, like a wood, there is hope. Because wood has a wood, wooden instrument has a hope that stream will bring him directly to the lotus feet of Shimata Radharani. If we are not wood surrendered to the stream, hope will not arise. It's just a false hope. Because the faith is weak. Of course, for that we need a time. It's not going over the night. But at least we should know the process in the heart, not in the mind and intellect. What do you say, Chakshuji? You have some commentaries? I have a, the next sentence I don't right. understand, so I wanted to ask you to explain this. When this example is to be invigorated, one must awaken one Swarupa Vesh. Wait. So, you want this to share? Huh? When this example is to be invigorated, what does it mean, invigorated? Revived. Revived. Derek, what do you think? You are 
expert you are english <laughs> from ireland all right wrong button sorry um invigorated yeah vigor is like energy 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 energized energized, energized yeah, yeah. invigorated right. invigorating right. thank you i think so Raghunath's example has to invigorate us, invigorate us. And to receive this strength from him, we should meditate on ourselves in our Swarup flesh. So one cannot separate. It's not possible because this is the reason why sh we should know that Raghunath Goswami is not only Raghunath Goswami, that Rupa Goswami is not only Rupa Goswami. They are Rupa Manjari and Rati Manjari. And I want to approach them like a Manjari to receive their Manjari association. This is the reason why I'm following them, not because they are Goswamis. Because they are specific Goswamis. Inner mood is Manjari Bhav. This is why I want to follow Rupa and Raghunatha Goswami in my Sadaka wish. But like Rupa Manjari and Rati Manjari in Swarup wish. So for that, my Swarup is necessary. And if I'm enough fortunate to receive this swaroop from my Gurudev, then by practicing my swaroop, meditation in myself, because Raghunath, again, I'm speaking, I am a maidservant, he's saying. He's, he didn't say, I'm Goswami, I'm Bhakta, I'm devotee. No, he said, I'm maidservant. I accept female body, female feelings, female thoughts, female anguish, female eagerness. You know, female eagerness is not the same like a male eagerness. Because the nature of the female is to give, and the nature of the male is to take. To enjoy. So he said, I am a maid servant of your lotus feet. And Chakshuji read, when this example is invigorated, one must awaken one's Swarup wish. So this is my sadhana. To slowly Awake, establish, fixed my spiritual identity. And to see myself not like a male or a female, but to see like a Radhika's maid servant in all circumstances, outside, externally, but also internally. Yes. And when I say externally, I don't say that we have to behave, you know, like uh, females. No. Manjari Bhava has to be hidden in the heart. Hidden. And all our Goswamis were hiding their Bhava deeply in the heart. But the nature of their bhava, nature of prema, is that by its own will, it will burst out. And how we know that it bursts out? Because they wrote these verses. They didn't thinking, you know, I had such a beautiful realization, Radhika appears in front of me. I was engaged in seva, and now I will write about that. This is the proudness. 
No, they couldn't resist because the steam of their pure love was so compressed in their hearts that automatically burst out. And we now, Sadakas, Neophytes, we have a chance to take these drops. And these drops will melt our hearts, for sure. Duranga Sundara, I'm sorry, uh, before, uh, you, when you was reading, you said also that we should connect our senses with their senses, not only heart with their heart, but our senses to their senses. Did you uh, think uh, the same things what Chuck Shu now said, actually, by this expression? Uh, this is one question. And uh, another is, uh, I, I see very, uh, when you said, yeah, okay, okay. Hey, I don't have so so much capacity <laughs> for this. You know. Sorry. When we speak about senses, there are two types of senses, materialistic senses and spiritual senses. When devotee is fixed in his desire to attain spiritual goal, he wants to awake and increase his spiritual senses. But what he is doing with his materialistic senses? He is engaging in seva. So in one moment, all these senses are working for the same purpose. They are combining together to help devotee <clears throat> to fulfill his desire. And what is devotee has desire? to give, to please Ishtadev. All his senses are combined like a laser, you know, like fo they're focusing just on one goal, to please Ishtadev. With Sadak, Seva Sadaka Rupena, and also in Siddha Rupena. And then in one moment, when he attained perfection, everything blend together and merge together. Raghunath doesn't feel any difference anymore between his spiritual and materialistic, let's say, sadaka senses. This is Chitta Vrit. He is completely immersed in his spiritual identity. Completely. And this is the Bhava level, and on Bhava level it starts. This process is starting and then developing slowly, 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 up to the Mahabhava. I, I don't know where is Gurudev. And when, when you said also that uh, that we should not uh, put their example on our level, but uh, just to see them like they are, like like Prabhupada uh, uh, read the Bhagavad Gita as it is, you know. So to understand them really as it is, uh, it's it is it seems to be very very important very, to go directly to the to the goal. Yes, as it is. Thank you for this sharing. Thank you for this because to feel. Raghunatha's feelings as it as they are <laughs> means to connect from our Swarup to his Swarup. And the more we are con connected, we will feel more as they are, his senses, his feelings, his mind, his thoughts. 
in one place, Ananta Das Babaji is speaking, we, Sadaka should merge. Interesting word he is using. Sadaka should merge his mind with the minds of Acharya. In other words, it means Sadaka should merge his heart with the hearts of Acharya. But why I cannot merge my mind with the minds of Acharyas? Because my mind wants other things. My mind is full of my ideas, independency, my conception, and I want to put them on my level. Because you know, they don't understand me. It's not the question that they understand me, the, the point is that, that I understand them. If it's not our goal, then we cannot practice sadhana bhakti. But the tendency also is, even in daily life, in materialistic life, that lower gunas always want to pull down the higher gunas, and especially in Kali Yuga. You see how many people are so clever, so intelligent, but the tamastic people are always pulling them down. Come on my level. So we are doing also the same thing. We want to put Gurudev on our level, hoping that we will understand him better. No, it's not going like this. This is illusion, sorry. And many years can pass like this. But if we accept with full faith his position, with full love, then this is the next step, with full love, then we can accept everything, all streams, what he has in, from his heart in our heart, to be transferred in our heart. This is the key point. Chakshuji and me were talking a few days ago about this connection between Guru and Shishya. So we were talking about how love is important between them. And why I love him, I really don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> why I like my wife, please don't ask me. All answers which I will give, it, it will be, you know, just, it's not sufficient, you know, expression. Why I love my friend, you cannot explain love, that's the point. You cannot make a formula for the love. We should relish the love and enter deeply in the love. Or we cannot. Love has no reason. And no season. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, you know. When someone will appear in your life and catch your life, uh, catch your love and heart. So in the similar way, pure devotees which are coming on this planet, their main mission for us, they have other missions. It's pastime. But the main mission for them is to catch our hearts. Because if they really catch our hearts, then the job is done. It's just a question of time when the mango will ripen. Because mango has to be nourished with love, not with other ingredients. Love of sun, 
And in our case, what is this sun? Heart of Rasik devotees. This is our only sun and moon. <laughs> one is heating, and one is cooling. Sometimes heating, sometimes cooling. This is the effect of love. And then can you imagine how pure love is very effective? And this secret, Raghunath knows very well. And I want that he becomes my example. I'm sorry for him, <laughs> you know, because I'm trying, this person like this wants to approach him. But what should I do? This is my only hope. To follow his feelings. And then my feelings will start to change from materialistic conception, materialistic emotions will slowly start to change because I accept to flow like a wood in his stream of love towards Swami. And that is the key point. It is the nature of bodily consciousness that the mind and the intelligence remain attached to dull, perishable matter. But the beauty of Swarupavesh has no connection or relation with anything of this material world. So Chakshuji and me, we were talking also how mind can be very rough, stubborn. But when it comes, wild, even wild. But when it comes in the contact with Swarup, with spiritual identity, he's become same mind is becoming soft and tender and all devotees I don't know I'm not good in numbers but in Bhagavad Gita I said that the greatest austerity for the mind is to become happy <laughs> isn't it I, I don't know where it's uh, it's a uh, words, but I don't know where from Bhagavad Gita. The greatest austerity for the mind is to be happy. Materialistic mind cannot be happy. Never, never can be happy. But when Krishna is talking it to Arjuna, he said, your mind is foolish because you felt on bodily consciousness of life. But if you accept your real position, natural position like my servant then your mind will be very happy even in the battlefield so mind and senses are working together to always disturb us when we are connected with the material dull Baba is saying dull world He's stupid when he is connected with the world. You know how many nights I didn't slept because my mind worries for things which never happened. <laughs> I spent so many nights worrying about things which never happened, you know, because my mind is dull, is foolish. Because it's not connected with those who are floating 
in the mood, in the flow of pure love. This is my sad story. And I'm wasting the time. I waste it, and still I'm wasting the time. So I need the mercy. I need the blessings and the kindness. This is only hope. And Raghunath here is an example of that hope. Please revive me. This is the sign of hope, but he's talking in the words. Please revive me. I am dying, but I have hope in you. Why would such? No, no. If anyone wants to share, just jump. I, I, I cannot. You, you know, I, I, I am in my flow, and I, I cannot think who wants to share, who doesn't want to share. Please, just jump it, interrupt me. Again. Why? Would such a person like anything in the material world? Raghunath was as wealthy as Lord Indra and his wife was as beautiful as an angel. But he gave it all up and fully surrendered at the lotus feet of Sriman Mahaprabhu. I am acquainted with so many people of this world, but I am not at all acquainted with my beloved deity. In his Manashiksha, Sri Raghunath says, Although I managed to give up lust and anger, and so on. The shameless dog eating person of the desire for distinction is still dancing in my heart. How can beautiful love ever touch my heart then. This desire for distinction does not allow the natural love for the lotus feet of the beloved deity to come in the heart. The root cause of this pollution is identification with the material body. So this is the root cause of appearance of distinctions, or pratishta, we say. Because pratishta has, is going hand by hand with bodily consciousness of life. No one can separate it. Raghunath admits with his own words, I am free from lust even, which is very difficult to reject, to be free from. I am fr I'm free from all other pollutions, but this pollution for distinction is so deeply rooted in my heart. Because this is the, how to say, this is the essence of my materialistic existence.
desire for pratishta. It goes parallel with devotional life, with devotional practice, not life. Devotional practice is better to say. Because devoting one side is wanting to attain spiritual goal, but on another side he is still on bodily consciousness of life. So this pratishta is going simultaneously, a parallel way. And it's very, very difficult to notice it, especially when it comes on the subtle levels. For that, again, we need strong connection with those devotees, pure devotees, who can help us and free our soul from this kind of pollution, this kind of chain, prison. I remember Bhakti Thakur in one book, he said, you can leave everything, but you cannot leave Pratishta. It requires special mercy. And this Pratishta is like a Kalya snake has so many faces, only one head, and Kalya had many heads. And it can be very, very subtle. And Raghunath is saying here, this desire for the instinction doesn't allow natural love for the lotus feet of beloved deity to come in my heart. This is the greatest obstacle, because this is the complete condensed manifestation of false ego. And ordinary devotees, they cannot recognize it. Even advanced devotees, they cannot recognize it. Only pure premika devotees, they can recognize it. And they can use their kripa in their specific way to free serious sadaka candidate who really wants to attain a goal. He is not just speaking empty words. I want to attain Radhika. I want to attain her lotus feet. No. They have to test also it. Do you still have a desire for distinction, for the chair, for the position, for this and that and that? I will offer you everything what do you want. Oh, this is mercy. This is instruction of my guru. This is the blessings. And if the goal is not fixed, Prema is not fixed, not other goals. Prema Purusharta. No one of us can pass this test. And how it's a serious problem, Raghunath is saying, this dog, shameless dog eating woman. It's not enough that she is just a dog eating woman <laughs> because he wants to say low caste, low caste, someone who is completely low. It's not vegetarian, it's not, she is eating the stool practically. And she is shameless. Why she is shameless? Because she is proud. She is proud. I am proud on that dog eating woman in my heart. So, like our guru there is saying, this is our homework, 
This is the part, very important part of our sadhana. Because otherwise, what is the use of all chanting hundreds and hundreds of rounds? If we are not doing our homework inside of us. And I remember one time I asked Gurudev, please, would you be so kind that whenever you see my independent nature, false ego nature, please correct me on the spot, immediately. And he said, no. You have to see all this mischievous. You have to see, you have to do your homework first. And then, if you are really sincere, I can help you. But if you still want to swim and dive in this tool, okay, this is your desire. In his Swarupa Vesh, the aspirant Sorry. must. Sorry? Um, I think this is um, quite perhaps a sharp point, and it is ex expressed in a really drastically way. And um, yes, we have to to overcome perhaps our material consciousness and to dive in to meditate in our Svarup. But I think I, I would more like to embrace my mind, to be pitiful with my mind, to consider my mind as a friend of me who helps me really to survive in this material world. And perhaps it would be a more um, a nicer way, or I could accept it more if it is would be said there is more than this, not than this is such such a, a deep level also associated. No, I don't want to tell this. I I would like to to find a way to love it to embrace it because it is weak and to accept what is in, um, with, with the target to overcome it. Yes, to be at the lotus feet of Guru Des, of course, but, but not as um, such a harsh kind of rejecting. Sorry. Oh. Always my approach. Yeah, oh. Sharing. So this is the reason why Baba is saying, when the mind is connected with material dull energy, it's a rough, and it's not friend at all. But like you said, if he is absorbed in his spiritual identity, and he is connected with the same like-minded people, persons, then he becomes sweet, tender, mild, and happy. And this is my friend. And the first words in Manashiksha is, uh, my brother. Yes. My brother, my dear brother, not my enemy my brother. But when you are my brother, I accept you like my brother. When you are thinking on Radha Krishna, first he said, Guru, Goranga, 
Vrindavan, Radha and Krishna, then you are my brother. And I love, I love you so much. Otherwise, I'm sorry. You're not my friend. You're my Asat Sangha. So Baba is saying here also, I'm acquainted with so much people around me. But I'm not acquainted with my beloved. And when I'm acquainted, surrounding, and very close to my beloved, and those who are beloveds of my beloved, then this I can say that I am in proper association. Sat Sangha. But I should see the soul in everybody. Yes. Totally agree. First, I have to see my soul. If you I don't see everything. my soul... I react on this. Yes. I know that you know, we are not talking. <laughs> if I don't see myself like a soul, it's very difficult, almost impossible to see the others like a soul. If I don't see Radharani in my heart, it's almost impossible to see Radharani in other hearts. So this is the Jiva Daya. One of the very important instructions. How to practice Bhakti. First, a sign by Gurudev is saying that you are soul. But what does it mean to assign? It means that I accept completely, I am living in this soul consciousness, and I don't have any doubts about that. In all circumstances, I assign that. And when the person assigned mm -hmm. that, the mind is following his heart, not opposite. The mind is following his heart. And it's always trying to merge in citta, in the heart. And in the moment when mind merge in the heart, full of pure feelings, it becomes tender, my brother, my sister, It becomes happy, relax, and so on and so on, and ready for devotional service. If he is not relaxed, if he is not in this nice, kind, soft, tender mood, he cannot serve with pure love. So this is the reason why Guru Dev so many times are asking, at least I understand like this, maybe others not. You have to prepare your pot, your heart. And to prepare heart means, first of all, to close the holes in that heart. When you put the water in the pot, which has the holes, everything is going leaking. So all Kripa <laughs> which is coming in the heart which is not full of holes, not so much effect. 
So preparing the heart first starts to, to close the holes. And this kind of pot of the heart without holes then can receive amrita, nectar of pure devotional life and services. Then my mind is my sweet, dear brother. Because it's merged with my swarup. Of course, by the mercy. Thank you, Sudan. In his Swarupa Vesh, the aspirant must certainly experience that. I don't have anyone else but you in this world. This is my brother mind. This is my brother heart. I don't have anyone else but you, my dear love. No one is satisfying me. And if no one is satisfying me, my mind is always disturbed. And it's not my dear. But when he is focused on love, object of love, then I am embracing him wholeheartedly. Unless one thinks like that, one cannot proceed towards the lotus feet of the beloved deity. Unless one thinks like that, he cannot proceed to the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. And Baba, when he is saying, unless one thinks like that, it means also, unless one completely feels like that. With all his senses, he is feeling. All his senses, he is feeling. And I accept, I expect realizations. But at the same time, I'm not accepting the words of Acharyas. I don't accepting the guidance of Acharyas, instructions of Acharyas. I don't accept their heart, their mind. I want my mind, my senses, my conclusions. And then I'm benefit of real realizations. Because I'm not the wood instrument who is flowing in the flow in the strong river of Radhika's emotions and emotions of her maidservants. Out of eagerness for his beloved deity, the practicing devotee cannot sit quietly. He feels like a deer pierced by an arrow. So he eagerly comes to Rindavan, hoping to catch a glimpse of his beloved. Srila Naradam Das Thakur sings. When will I see blissful Vrindavan 
and smear its dust on my body? When can I lovingly, lovingly roll out around there, chanting the names of Radha and Krishna and weeping profusely? I will go to the solitary arbors and fall flat on the ground, crying out, O oh Lord of Radha, when will I go to the bank of the Jamuna, touch her waters and drink it with the cups of my hand palms? Oh, when can I go to the circle of the Rasa dance and roll around there? When will I become most happy by getting shaded by the Vamshivat tree? And when can I stay in that shade? When can I fill my eyes with the view of Govardhan Hill? And when can I live at Radhakund? The lowly Naradam Das sings, When will my body fall while I wander around there? So we can hear, we can relish through our ears how much emotions, devotional emotions, Naratam Das Thakur infused here in these verses. And the goal of us sadakas, beginners, is to connect with this kind of emotions of such kind sublime, sublime personality. I have been in Gordon, I have been in Yamuna, I, I have been in Radhakunda. I have been in so many places in Vrindavan. But I didn't have a proper emotions. So this is my misfortune. And my mind will be my best friend if he connects itself with the mind of this Narottam Das Thakur, Mahashaya. My heart will be my best friend. if it connects with full love with his heart, then maybe by his mercy and the mercy of all these holy places, I will have some drops of nectar. Please, Chakshuji, read again these few verses and we can stop here because it's too long. To finish Are there the words, verses from Narodham Das Thakur? Yes, please. When will I see blissful Vrindavan and smear its dust on my body? When can I lovingly roll around there? chanting the names of Radha and Krishna and weeping profusely. I will go to the solitary arbors and fall flat on the ground, crying out, O Lord of Radha, when will I go to the bank at the Jamuna, touch her waters, and drink it with the cups of my hand palms. Oh, 
When can I go to the circle of the Rasa dance and roll around there? When will I become most happy by getting shaded by the Vamshivat tree? And when can I stay in that shade? When can I fill my eyes with the view of Govardhan Hill? And when can I live at Radakund? When will my body fall while I wander around there? In the genuine humble prayer of Mahajan. It's not false. Nothing is false in his words. His tears are not false. His words are not false. His feelings are not false. We need this kind of pure satsanga. But my distinction, desire for distinction, is so strong that even if I cry, I crowd that others see me. Even if I roll on the ground, I do it purposely, that others see me, how I am advanced. You see that now in my heart, who is full of distinction, because distinction is my brother, loving brother, love cannot appear in my heart. And everything is here in front of me. My, my, but my dear shameless brother of distinction, of Pratishta, is blocking me. So for that, I desperately need causeless mercy, only causeless. And I need strength and enough love to connect my heart, my all, even sadaka existence, with this kind of personalities like Raghunath, Narottam Das Thakur, Ananta Das Babaji, so on, so on, so on, and my Gurudev. There is no other hope. Rather, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe, thank you so much for your wonderful explanations. Thank you, Jakshuji. Whenever you read, I don't know, so many flows are coming. It's Gurudev's mercy. I don't know why he's doing this to this unworthy person. Loudspeaker. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I, I'm not aware about them. Because this is my. This is the beauty of Chakrush reading that you get the flow. By your mercy, Gurudev. Only by your mercy. When you read, is a flow. Complete flow, Gurudev. And he is following um, your flow. I am listener, so I need little loud. But really beautiful. Great. Thank you. Great. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. For engaging us. Yes.
after the class from the village and we get it. This is the great master.